Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Crypto Corner. Today I'm coming to you from Singapore and uh, we're going to talk Bitcoin. We're going to analyze the chance of Bitcoin because it seems like we're out of this correction already. Quite a quick uh, recovery we made over the last couple of days. So I'm going to go into the chance of Bitcoin and I'm going to look at Ethereum as well. So stay tuned, let's get started. All right, everyone, let's get started. Well, today I'm coming to you from Singapore. I'm continuing my travels around Asia until May. And uh, today I'm actually in the Monaco of the East, as I call it, uh, Singapore. It's a fantastic place. That's why I actually picked one of their landmarks here behind me to use as a backdrop of this video. But of course, I'm going to switch into my other screen in a moment and we're going to look at the charts of Bitcoin and Ethereum to establish some of these uh, important target zones, uh, whether we're going up or we're going down what is the most likely scenario what am i expecting to see over the next few days this is what i'm going to do also just to remind you you have a chance of winning a free hardware wallet if you missed my previous episode i posted a review on one key a brand new hardware wallet device that i just started using i'm replacing keep key an older device even though they sound similar they actually have nothing in common they have completely different brands and everything and my keep key malfunctioned after using it for about five years uh, I can't upgrade my firmware it's it's stuck up at one point and it it cannot move forward I, tr I reached out to keep key support uh, team they they gave me a very generic response and they're not really able to solve my issue and quite frankly I'm done with it this is why I'm now moving uh, to a different device a completely new device and one key is super light very easy to use and I'm really impressed with it this is why I reached out to them and they agreed to do a giveaway for you guys make sure that you watch my previous episode leave comments under that video for your chance to win one of those for free i will be picking winners on sunday at the end of this week so you still have quite a few days to go and watch the video and leave comments all right now the market is up today we see that uh, bitcoin is almost 10 percent up ada is doing quite a good recovery as well also around 10 percent matic is doing a good recovery and quite a few other tokens are actually doing very good gains a lot of the Lido apparently is one of my biggest gainers yet again it is making a great recovery by the way I did mention in my previous uh, technical analysis when I looked at Lido um, the charts I told you that it could go to around two dollars even 190 something I expected that when it went to 198 so it went very close to my lowest target and I was very glad to scoop some at around 204 207 today it's almost 260 in fact so very good recovery congratulations to everyone who managed to watch this video and took action and uh, of course i'm never telling you what to do you have to decide for yourself what you're going to do whether you're selling whether you're buying but uh, i certainly sold as i saw as i told you in my video i sold at around 250 even 240 and then i repurchased at 204 207 and uh, 215 i think was the last price that i was purchasing so i'm very happy to see that today we're back at 260 but let's take a look at Bitcoin and Ethereum because these are the important coins and uh, Bitcoin of course is driving the whole market so we need to know what Bitcoin is doing even if you're not trading Bitcoin you have to be aware of what it's doing so let's take a look all right so let's start with the daily here on Bitcoin first of all in my previous analysis I was drawing here a five wave Fibonacci level count that I was saying that I was expecting wave five to take us much higher and i did say that if i see that we drop here and it's not just a minor correction but it's actually an impulsive drop which is what we saw then that will invalidate my wave five being higher and it will just confirm that we completed wave five here so this is really where we completed it because this here was an imp impulsive uh, drop so this actually is basically our abc correction that we just saw that's the a b and c wave abc correction follows an impulse five waves on the Elliott wave structure so this whole structure here has been completed i can remove it the correction is also completed and i know that because we actually went to my lower support region here and we are bouncing up already we are making this v-shape recovery which is quite a strong sign that this pullback 
has been completed. It does not mean that we are not going to fall any lower, but it means that we completed the ABC correction following the five impulse Elliott waves. All right, now what I like about this chart is that we are reclaiming the 50th moving average. As we are reclaiming, we are starting to get bullish again. However, we have to be very cautious about this because a lot of the times our first attempt fails. And uh, right now we are only just breaking above the 50th moving average. As you know, when we are below the daily 50th moving average, I'm bearish and I'm not interested in taking any trades. As we break above the 50th moving average, this is when I'm actually getting bullish. And I like that. Now, if we manage to hold this level and we stay above this 50th moving average for a few days, it will confirm that we are going up and uh, most likely we're going to see a bullish cross here in the 9th and the 50th moving averages just as we saw the bearish cross here indicating further downwards price action and as you see from here we actually dropped much lower so this bearish cross was was already quite telling that we can expect a deeper correction i talked about this in my previous analysis now we are about to see a bullish cross but not just yet we could see a bullish cross if we stay above this 50th moving average for at least two more days and uh, as of right now we uh, haven't got that confirmation if you look back in time you are going to see that we do have other failed attempts of breaking the 50th moving average which is quite bearish for us so here we uh, broke but the next and the next day we managed to stay above it but we printed this inversed hammer which is actually showing an exhausted uh, um, momentum and then we drop below the 50th moving average continuing and making a much deeper correction before we find another strength here to break above this moving average uh, again here for a few more days we managed to be above the 50th, 50th moving average but then we broke below it as well and um, and here we broke very briefly above it we only touched it we printed a week and then we continued on the downside so we didn't have enough strength here we also broke above this 50th moving average two more days we stayed above it and then we had a very strong uh, pullback, a strong selling pressure here that managed to bring uh, the price down way uh, below the 50th moving average. So we have to be aware that this scenario is still a possibility. We could see that we literally just broke above the 50th moving average. This is not yet a confirmation. If we look on the weekly, what I like on the weekly is also that we are breaking above the 21 moving average. This is another important uh, moving average here on the weekly, but as you see, it's only just a week. I really want to see the body of the candle moving upwards here and I want us to see and hold above this level so that we can really talk about a bullish momentum starting to build. For the time being, we haven't seen that yet. And bear in mind, the stochastic RSI is still in the overbought region. We are just coming down from this overbought region and we still have more room to be going down before we really talk about, uh, you know, uh, getting here some bullish signals on the stochastic RSI. For the moment, we don't really have this. And um, let's go back on the daily. Uh, on the daily we are also seeing that the volume is down as the price is going up and this is not very bullish at all this is actually a bearish indicator now i know that we had a weekend so it's possible that you know the volume is dropping because of a weekend and uh, today has only just started so we could see a lot more volume coming in and if that is the case then it will indicate the opposite it will indicate a bullish momentum starting to build but for the time being for the moment as i'm recording this we are seeing price going up with volume going down and this for the moment is a bearish signal okay so we have to be aware of that the markets are looking good they are starting to look like they will print a bullish cross soon but again we do need at least a couple more days of this to at least hold this momentum that we are currently building even if not a strong rally on the upside, at least holding uh, sideways and, you know, doing a bit of a consolidation will bring these moving averages tighter together and they will print a bullish cross indicating a further upwards price action. So this is what I'm looking for here. Uh, we do have a resistance on the way up. We do have this, which is already, you know, a few times has been a resistance, the 23,800. 
Are we going to go up there? We might not even reach that. We'll see how it goes. It really depends on uh, whether there's any more bad news coming because for the last few days, it's been very bad news for Bitcoin. You know, crypto banks like Silicon Valley uh, Bank uh, uh, collapsing and the Silvergate before that. So not really not good, but it is good that Bitcoin manages to pump even just a couple of days after this uh, last uh, collapse of a bank. So uh, we do have the golden Fibonacci ratio sitting at 22,900. So most likely to me, this is our first target and this is uh, the first rejection point. That to me, that's what it looks like. Also, you can see that this resistance that I just drew almost coincides. Let me just move it. It coincides with the 0.786 Fibonacci level. So these are the two uh, targets on the way up my two target zones the the first one being the 22800 which is very close to where we are we we came up here and we got rejected already but uh, most likely we are going to make another attempt and if we manage to break above this then 23800 is the next stop I personally feel that we're not going to have enough strength to break above this one here most likely we're going to get rejected so this is another one that we have to keep an eye on and um, we're gonna go into the Dixie in just a moment because the dollar index as you know uh, it, we have to monitor it in regards to price of Bitcoin but uh, before I go into the dollar Dixie another thing that I want to point out and let me just switch here the moving averages so um, this is the simple moving average before that we were looking at the 50 EMA now we're looking at just the 50 moving average MA um, as you see we it acts as a resistance so the simple moving average the 50th daily simple moving average has not yet been conquered so this is very important and it is right now coinciding with this resistance that is a Fibonacci resistance level move a 50th moving simple moving average this is actually quite a strong resistance this is why we are failing right now to break this so it's very important to monitor over the next day or so how we are going to respond to this level are we going to find the strength to break above it if we don't then we're going to have another pullback. I'm not saying it will be another severe drop, like a deeper pullback, but most likely we are going to be coming down here to our first support, which is at 21,700. And we do have a second support at just about 21,000. So these are the levels that I'm looking on the way up and on the way down. Let's take a look at Ethereum. And Ethereum is kind of moving within its channel here. We have the resistance and the support. We just got rejected from this resistance. So we came down all the way to the support. We actually broke this support very briefly. Uh, I do have a low, I did have a lower line support line here drawn at the 1400. We even broke that one. We came down to 1374, but that was very brief. And just like with Bitcoin right now, we're making this V-shape rec recovery. We are coming above our 50th daily moving average. This is the exponential moving average, the EMA. Um, let's take a look at the simple MA because I'm curious to see if we are actually breaking this one. And uh, we are, but uh, we are also getting rejected. But as we speak right now, we are starting what it looks like we are starting yet again to break above this 50th simple moving average so that's good we'll see how it goes if we manage to break above it and hold above it then this will be very bullish it, it actually looks a little more bullish than bitcoin all right so um but uh, really this is the resistance that we are failing already twice and i'm expecting that even if we come again to this resistance over the next few days we are yet again going to get rejected because i just don't see enough bullish sentiment right now to be able to give the bulls that uh, courage to actually and uh, you know a uh, purchasing power to actually break above this resistance most likely we're going to come and retest this if we even because we could actually get stopped before that we do have a resistance around this level here at 16, six, so mid 1600s we have a, another resistance and uh, right now I actually expect that this is the first resistance that is going to get us rejected and then 
uh, our support so far still staying strong even though we broke we broke very briefly just a week of a candle we printed this hammer here which is also showing just like the inverted hammer on bitcoin earlier that i mentioned here we actually have a typical hammer candle that is showing that this trend is getting exhausted it means that as the selling pressure continued the buyers stepped in the bulls stepped in and said we actually like this price level we are accumulating and they started buying a lot here not allowing uh, ethereum to drop any further and uh, really very quickly buying these lower prices here creating this hammer this candle is called a hammer because it actually looks like a hammer it's got a very short body and very long wick and uh, in the in bitcoin earlier it was an inverted one it was a very long wick on the way up and uh, the short body was down so usually when you see you know this kind of a candle or if you see a doji which is very similar to this one it, it looks like this it's got a, a a long wick on both ends and a short body this type of a candle indicates that the momentum is exhausted if you know especially when it follows a longer candle like this here and here's another example we have a few longer candles and then we have that very short candle with the long wick indicating that this trend here this momentum on the way down is exhausted and as you see after that it got followed by two white soldiers not three which is what we are starting to see here possibly today we're going to print a third white soldier these candles where you have these uh, long candles and every next candle starts from where the previous one ended you know this one closed here and then the next one opened at the same place as this one closed and it got longer and then the next one opened at the same price range where the previous one closed so these are called white so uh, three white soldiers here uh, here we didn't see the three of them we only saw two and they're not really called two white soldiers but i'm just calling them that because it's easier anyways uh, i digress uh, what i'm saying here is that we do have a target price of uh, mid 1600s on the way up and we do have a target price of uh, mid 1400s on the way down we are still moving within this channel here our support and resistance zones and uh, until we find enough strength to break either on the way up or on the way down this is the channel that we are respecting no changes here and lastly i almost forgot to look at the jixi the dollar index all right well why i'm doing that because as you can see the dollar index is actually dropping it has a pullback and this is the main reason why we are seeing bitcoin going up over the last three days we have three green candles on bitcoin we have three red candles on the jixi as you know they're directly correlated and as you see here when bitcoin dropped a few days ago the Dixie printed this very big green candle so this is one of the main reasons why Bitcoin dropped because the Dixie was actually very strong that day and this is why we saw such a deep correction on Bitcoin deeper than many of us expected um, I mean the Dixie was going up that was something that I drew a long time ago last time I revisited the Dixie chart with you was at least uh, two or three weeks ago um, so this is what I was expecting this already played out now that we are actually dropping here in the stochastic RSI we are going quite low so this is not very good for us um, this means that very soon the Dixie is going to bounce on the upside and this is going to bring the next pullback in Bitcoin and uh, it could be very soon because as you can see I drew these Fibonacci levels here just to see where can we stop and by the look of it we are already at a support level so if this support doesn't hold the Dixie it's going to be good for us because then it's going to fall to the lower support and uh, that will print another high uh, for Bitcoin, not necessarily high, but you know, the, the, we're going to continue the uptrend for Bitcoin if we see the Dixie dropping here to lower support regions. But if the Dixie has found the support here and is now going to start a recovery on the way up, then Bitcoin is going to be dropping. So this is another chart that you should be paying attention to because this is directly, as I said, correlated with Bitcoin. And as such, 
it is it will affect the rest of the crypto market because the way it affects bitcoin bitcoin is driving the whole crypto market so if bitcoin starts going down because of dixie going up ethereum is gonna go down as well all the altcoins are also be going down so it's important keep an eye on this chart for the time being i'm expecting a bounce on the upside very soon because we've already had four days these are four red candles here uh, kind of the three uh, red candles here first we had the doji that was showing that this up move is exhausted and then we have these three soldiers here that are perfectly indicating that a bearish price action is to be expected typically these three soldiers are actually indicated that we are continuing this trend so it is very possible that we do a bit of a consolidation here you know a few more red candles not as big as these ones but it is possible that over the next few days we're going to see a little bit more of a drop into this region not necessarily touching the lower support but at least you know coming towards it and this is the 0.50 fibonacci level which as i said a lot of the times this is acting as a support so to me it, it looks like a very possible scenario that eventually we are going to come here not in a day i'm not expecting one big red candle to come to the 0.50 here but at least a few days of uh, sorts of consolidation sort of sideways but still slightly downwards so that we come and retest this support here before we make a bounce on the upside and that bounce on the upside as i said will cause bitcoin and the rest of crypto to drop so if you're taking any trades then watch this as well because you might be uh, you might want to set up some stop losses or even you might want to be prepared for selling as you see this bounce here start all right guys well this is everything for today's episode of crypto corner i hope this was helpful and if you liked it show your support by leaving a like and a comment below also make sure that you catch my previous episode where i talked about one key and why i started using it and i'm very happy with this device so for your chance to win one of those brand new hardware wallet devices for free make sure that you watch the episode and leave a comment or actually you can leave more than one comment below that video and also make sure that you check out the links in the description below where I drop the links to all of the crypto services that I'm personally using and that I recommend to you. And uh, while you're here, why not just pick another one of my videos and I'm going to see you in the next one.